I'm Zach Foster. I am Adam Kokesh's biographer. That's the entire reason why I'm on this tour. Learning about his life, learning about his personality, learning about his family, his personal history, and setting the record straight on a number of accusations that were made against him last year. There's really not a whole lot of information about the life of Adam Kokesh, and he's got tens of thousands of very dedicated supporters. I would say the number of people who are aware of him are somewhere in the millions, but as far as a hardcore following, those people are at least in the tens of thousands, possibly the hundreds of thousands, and they know very little about him, so it's not a big secret that the fandom just wants a biography of Adam Kokesh. So I was heavily involved in the grassroots liberty movement back in early 2011. I believe by 2011 he'd already had his, uh, his TV show Adam vs. the Man, so he, he had a following, he had a name out there. I was aware of who he was. I actually disliked him pretty severely. I remember there was a point in 2012 where he came out and he denounced Ron Paul Inc. Uh, the people that he was denouncing, Jesse Benton, John Tate, some of the others, these were the specific asses that I was trying to kiss at the time. So when Adam Kokesh came out denouncing Ron Paul Inc., I actually took a lot of offense to that. And it took me a while to get over that. It actually took... It took uh, those men ending up in federal court and being convicted for similar things to what Adam was uh, accusing them of. It took that to really get me to change my mind about him and take him more seriously as an activist. Um, I had kind of just written him off before that from denouncing Ron Paul Inc. and then also from being willing to associate with some of the uh, you know conspiracy theorist crew and the Alex Jones folks um, and you know people who could you could definitely say are outside of the box. So between him going against the the establishment of the anti-establishment, which is exactly what I was trying to be, to his association with people that I didn't take seriously. I just wrote Adam Kokesh off for a while. But lo and behold, you know, a lot of the things that he was talking about ended up being spot on correct, and it took me a while to see that for myself. By January of 2017, I had seen enough abuse of soldiers and personnel inside the system that I was ready to just walk away completely. And that's when I finally decided, you know, I no longer believed in any of the system whatsoever. And I finally found myself in very strong agreement with Adam Kokesh on more issues than ever before. So not only was he somebody that I liked and respected and got along with on a personal level, but I also found myself very much philosophically on the same page with him on most issues. It was no secret that you know he was going around touring and giving out all these copies of his books. And uh, in the book Freedom, he makes you know brief little allusions to incidents from his own life, but he doesn't you know, really give much information about himself. And uh, his Wikipedia page is uh, pretty sparse. So uh, I would discuss that with him. I would let him know, hey, you know, I'm a book author. I would be interested in, in doing this. I would be interested in writing your biography, you know, especially after a lot of the bull crap that's been said about him um, in recent months, in recent months at the time. I said, uh, somebody ought to be setting the record straight about this. And he kind of considered that, but it was something that he kept on the table for a while because this was not a project that he wanted to take the lead on. He wanted to just take a step back and he said, if my story is going to be told, somebody else needs to tell it. Um, you know, my, my image is too tainted right now. And it just so happened that some of Adam's, uh, you know, most hardcore supporters were really serious about making a biography happen. They wanted to hire a writer to do this. They wanted this writer to be embedded with Adam Kokesh for a period of time. And they wanted him to not only address the allegations, but they also wanted him to give an objectively honest portrayal of Adam Kokesh, the man. And immediately they recommended me to him because by then I'd had all the experience that they'd wanted. I was a military public affairs writer and then I was working as a staff writer for this TV station. I had ghostwritten other books before, so they recommended me and those sponsors accepted me and I closed the book deal with them uh, that night 
and a couple days later, after I'd settled my affairs in order, I got on the road with them. What's What's special about this message is that, is that it unites Americans from all sides of this imaginary aisle that we've drawn between ourselves. What people on the left and on the right have in common who support Adam Kokesh is the progressives in San Francisco are willing to hold their peace while the conservatives in Texas secede and they cling to their God and their guns. If those same conservative Texans hold their peace while the free city of San Francisco joins the European Union like they always wanted to and does single-payer health care. We've talked with actual Antifa members who agree with this platform. They finally would not feel threatened if they were no longer tied in any way, shape, or form to people that they severely disagree with. And I think that's a big way forward for America.